So imagine getting a shot at working for some of the world's top consulting firms, McKinsey, BCG, Bain, Accenture, where every decision you make impacts billion dollar companies. In today's video, we're diving deep into the real life experience of Emily, who's been through that intense interview process from technical challenges to unexpected curveballs. We'll cover what it's like to interview for a big consulting company as a data engineer and how you can prepare to tackle it yourself. Thank you, Emily, for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, who you are, where did you go to school? My name is Emily. I'm currently a senior data engineer working in consulting industry. I got my master from a top university in the United States. My first job was not consulting, but then I translated to consulting because I like the exciting projects. You can work on a lot of projects abroad in different industries. I'm happy to be here and share my experience to everyone. I just want to jump right in and ask you, what is the data science, data engineering interview like for the MBB acronym that we'll use for McKinsey, Bain, BCG kind of interview like? And how is it different from maybe like a big tech interview, right? Because a lot of our audience is people that basically go through the tech interviews. I know a lot of people do the consulting ones as well. So we'd love to know the differences between the two. I also work in tech before, so I currently in consulting. So there may be some difference I can share. First is like the breadth and depth. So if you work in tech companies, you work in a specific area, like say you work on the sales and marketing or you work on the other team, like the subject was only one maybe for your entire team. But for consulting companies, you will have opportunity to work with others like pharmacy, finance, and also other NGO sometimes. And the interview difference, I think the first one would be the consulting company just for the data engineer role, the consulting company values more on Python, not on SQL. Although like for an intro level position, you may have like an online assessment, they will ask you one questions for SQL, but for if you go to more senior positions, read about the job description, how is the tools the current team using, so you can get a sense of where the interview will be. Because for my interview, it's very flexible. So the value of the Python very much. And my first round was with a person who work in the firm and also the same level with the position I was interviewed for. And we have a great conversation. It's only like uh, using pandas to do some data manipulation. And then you will talk about to a lot of like senior leader, leader positions like principals and directors. For principal part, part, so because this is a Python position, sometimes your interviewer will be not a principal data engineer, but he would be like a principal engineer, software engineer. You have to solve problems like what you usually met in a consulting firm. They are looking forward to come up with some solutions where even don't know see these questions, they codes or other platforms. And they change the question directions based on your performance. So if you have wanted to do some creative way or not doing in a normal way, they may be ask you, yeah, that's a good idea, but maybe just give you throw, throw to you many other following questions. So what's the difference between a typical consulting interview and a big tech interview? One thing is for tech companies, sometimes they need both SQL and Python. They may ask you like PySpark, Databricks, or cloud services you use. And for consulting, they don't ask you more like uh, SQL questions. They may be just like following on your Python skills more because for them, they use a lot of uh, Pandas, NumPy, PySpark, and Python. In interviews, yeah. there's more Python is what you're saying? Yes. So they may ask you like, here is a data site. Can you use Pandas to clean it up? Same, like you import the files and you do some like calculations and you do some aggregations. And then after it's cleaned up, you, you finish and hand it to your teammates. It's just like in your working, real working settings, you need to have very cleaned up data so that you can handle to the data analyst. That's Maybe right. another example is like you have a project using, you have a project using PySpark. You find out like this is because it's maybe just in Databricks or in Azure. So you have to use in PySparks to do some manipulations, data wrangling, and do some flattening sometimes. So Python is very, very important for consulting company. And is this usually done by 
screen share if it's a remote interview? Are they working with you on this Python problem over like a Jupyter notebook? What's the normal setting? So they usually do the lab coding session with you for maybe two or three out of the total four interviews. For the interview, they may be, you, you need to share your screen and you need to use your own IDE and you have to run it just showing to the interviewer. Yeah, the whole process will be assessed based on the results, not based on like you can write the code, but the code didn't work. Is this the case for all the data type roles? So is this the same for data scientists, for data analysts, maybe even machine learning engineers? Do you know anything about the other kinds of roles besides data engineering? So I have some relationship who works as a data analyst. So different is like for data analysis, you have to do some presentation sometimes. You're, the, the question was totally different. Or for data scientists, they may be focused on how you can do some uh, modeling thing, maybe just like on an assessment or it's like a home project you will take, but basically it's, it's totally different. But I can um, talk about data engineering more because I have experienced this. My suggestion is read about the job descriptions and talk to the, the consultant or the people who have worked there before and you could know like, or just like search online to Google it to see what questions and interview query is a good site if you want to explore. One thing I just want to elaborate there, this is kind of off topic, but one thing that that we're noticing is that, you know, ChatGBT could probably do a lot of those pandas data set aggregation and filtering and cleaning up the projects, right? And so I'm curious to see if the consulting companies have changed their interview process, given the fact that if I just, you know, entered the data set and asked ChatGBT to do this in Code Interpreter, it probably could get it pretty, get it done pretty accurately. Do you know anything if they're changing up this process? I don't think like the ChatGPT can, like people who use ChatGPT usually for their real works, but it's for interview. If I share my screen and the interview can see everything, what, what I'm doing now so if you just like say the question if you don't give a right prompt then you won't get the exact answer because it's of the problems always changing from the interviewer you cannot have they don't expect you to have a perfect answer like chat gpt usually maybe have a perfect answer but if you give the questions not right then you maybe just go the other way and it will be caught up by the interviewer. So can we go over a specific problem that would be asked in the MBB big consulting interviews? Just gave an example of my interview. My first round was, would be like a meeting coding with a people, coding with a person from the same level position I applied for. That's a question using pandas. It's very simple. You have to show that you can use pandas to manipulating data to calculation to ADA columns and mostly imp import FL. And the second interviewer, you maybe just have a more senior engineer from their team to ask you, like give you a question like they may be randomly selecting from their real working experience and you have to respond quickly. And one advice I gave is always ask clarifying questions and also be always talking. If you're not talking, you maybe just go to the wrong direction. And the third interview, maybe just like that try if you go well with the first two. And the last one would be like an interview with a engineer who will give you a DSA question, something like a legal question. But it's optional because sometimes you will be asked maybe just like PySpar or other like tools or cloud you used. But sometimes you will be asked like culture feed. How do you know consulting? And how do you think consulting work not exciting you or or exciting you? Or like say, do you think language barrier is a problem because you may work with different countries and you may have like a phone call from UK or from anywhere in this world? Yeah, but English is our official language, uh, no doubt. But if you have a second language, there will be eight advantage to your profile. What's a work-life balance at these consulting companies? If you work as a data scientist, you know if it's any different from general tech companies or, you know, is there more travel, other things like that? Yeah, I think the benefit of working in consulting companies you, is you have, you're not bored. You're not going to like work 
yourself, but you work with other people. And there are many events hosted every week, every month. And you have the opportunity to travel to another country for your projects. And you have transfer programs so that you can live in another country for one year to learn language or even doing some amazing project. So there are a lot of benefits. I think compared with tech industry, I know like many people just like hate return to work policy right now. But I think like if you really like your job, especially you enjoy working in this field, then you won't be resisted like for any changes in your company. I think working in consulting is like a dream job. You will feel the work-life balance is much better than tech industry. But sometimes if your project was very intense, has a very intense schedule, then you maybe just work a little bit more time than usual. But it won't be it won't be like so bad work life balance than working in tech. That's my opinion. So Emily, what does the career ladder look like for a data engineer at a consulting company? The data engineer role, or more specifically, the technical role is totally different than the other consultant or other business. So you start with a, let's take an example of software engineer. You start with a junior and then you promote it to senior level, then principal, then the manager level. The, the promotion happens every every two times per year. So you will be reviewed by your, your supervisor and you will quickly be promoted to the next level if you do your jobs very good. Where can people find more about what you're doing? Yeah, I created two courses based on my past interview experience. One course is for Python and one course is for SQL. These two courses is dedicated to help people who want to break into tech industry as a data engineer or as a business intelligence role. I created these two courses not only for tech, but also for consulting. I think they will benefit for people, especially intra-level or mid-level or a little bit of senior position. So it's for all level. And I hope this course can, I hope this course can help for like like the audience the learner learners help like find out like it's helpful for the interview so that's my initial thoughts to creating these two courses it's all a live udemy so it won't hurt just like a lunch fee for buying this course so you can get my interview experience forever in lifetime so all right thanks so much emily